This chapter focuses on analyzing and managing costs. In order to be successful in a modern business environment, businesses need to find ways in which to create value. One way to do that is to reduce their costs. In order to do this, they need to have effective cost management. This chapter will explore a number of techniques designed to help businesses manage their costs and pay particular attention to an approach called activity-based costing, which you may have seen in your previous studies. Firstly, we'll focus on traditional absorption costing. Now, traditional absorption costing was initially designed to help production businesses deal with their production overheads. And in particular, what a business would like to do is work out the cost of the products it is producing. Now, when doing this, it's very easy to estimate the direct costs of production. So it's things such as the direct materials and the direct labor. However, it's more difficult when producing a product to say how much that product has cost in terms of the overheads per unit. But absorption costing uh, is a method which allows businesses to charge overheads to products produced, which will then allow them to work out an estimated full production cost per unit. So let's have a look at this in more detail. Now, absorption costing is said to be a simple approach to absorb overheads into cost units. It's certainly much more simple than activity-based costing, which we'll cover later on in the chapter. Now, what we're trying to do with absorption costing is we're trying to absorb or charge overheads, if you like, to our cost units. And cost units are nothing more than the products produced, or if you're looking at a service business, the service which is provided. Now, in order to do this, what we first of all have to do is calculate for each department or cost center, both them terms mean the same thing, what's called an overhead absorption rate, which is often abbreviated to an OAR. Now, an overhead absorption rate is always calculated using a standard calculation, whereby we take the budgeted overheads of that department or cost center, and we divide this by a budgeted level of activity. Now you notice this calculation is based on budgeted figures. This is done at the start of a financial period because this is when a business needs to have a decent understanding of what things like its products are gonna cost and so on and so forth. Now, what that budgeted level of activity is within the calculation of the overhead absorption rate actually varies depending on the department under consideration. So therefore, what we look for in questions, if we need to determine this, is whether or not a department is what we would call machine intensive or labor intensive. If a department is machine intensive, it means the vast majority of the work done within that department is actually automated. It's carried out by equipment, by machinery. Therefore, when we're calculating our overhead absorption rate for that department, we take the budgeted overheads for that department and we divide it by the budgeted machine hours for that department because machine hours really are a good representation of the work that goes on in that particular part of the factory. However, in some cases, departments will be labor intensive and that will mean actually the vast majority of work in that department is carried out by human hand. Therefore, if we're calculating an overhead absorption rate for a labor intensive department, we take that department's budgeted overheads and we divide it by their budgeted labor hours. OK, so the key thing is an overhead absorption rate is calculated based on budgeted figures and the basis that we use for absorption, i.e. that budgeted level of activity is usually either machine hours or labor hours, depending on whether or not the department is machine or labor intensive. Let's take a look at an example for absorption costing and calculating overhead absorption rates. So we've got some information here on two departments. We've got department A and department B. Now what these departments have done is they've estimated what their budgeted overheads for the period are gonna be. So their indirect costs, the likes of maybe the rent, rates, supervisors, salaries, etc. Uh, and Department A has estimated that their overheads for the next period are gonna be $400,000 and Department B have estimated theirs would be $100,000. They've also estimated what their labor and machine hours will be for the next period. Now, if we focus on department A, they've got estimated budgeted labor hours of 2000 and budgeted machine hours of 20,000. Now, remember when we're calculating an overhead absorption rate, we need to determine whether or not a department is labor or machine intensive. And you'll see there the 20,000 figure for budgeted machine hours is in bold. Now that means clearly this department is machine intensive. It means the vast majority of the work done within this department is carried out by the equipment. So it's that 20,000 we'll use as our budgeted level of activity when working out our overhead absorption rate. 
On the flip side, Department B is clearly a labour-intensive department because the estimated or budgeted labour hours for the period are 4,000, where they're only expected to use 1,000 machine hours in the next period. So when we're working out the overhead absorption rate for Department B, we're actually going to use the budgeted level of activity in the budgeted labour hours, which are 4,000. So let's have a look how that impacts the calculations. So remember, the standard calculation to work out an overhead absorption rate is budgeted overheads over the budgeted level of activity. For Department A, that would give us an overhead absorption rate. The budgeted overheads are 400,000. It's a machine intensive department, so we'll divide that by the 20,000 machine hours, which will give us a rate of $20 per machine hour. Now, what that means is every time a product is expected to use one hour of Department A's time, that product will absorb, or if you like, be charged with $20 of Department A's overheads. Okay, we'll see how that sort of transpires in more detail shortly. To work out the overhead absorption rate for Department B, we take the budgeted overheads of 100,000, and that's a labor intensive department. So our budgeted level of activity is the budgeted labor hours for Department B of 4,000, and that gives us an overhead absorption rate of $25 per labor hour. And exactly the same, we now have a mechanism to absorb overheads into the products produced. And so if we had a product that was expected to use one labor hour of Department B time, we'd include $25 to cover the cost of Department B's overheads. Now, once we've calculated overhead absorption rates, we can then go through the process of absorbing overheads. Now, this is nothing more than trying to build up an estimated cost of making our products. So let's have a look at how this works. Now, overheads are absorbed into cost units, which are just products produced, using the overhead absorption rates. Now, as we said, what we're trying to do here is estimate the full production cost of our products. Now, the full production cost of our products will be made up of the direct cost per unit plus the overhead absorbed per unit. Now, the direct cost per unit will be the likes of your direct materials, your direct labor, and maybe any direct expenses if the question gives you any detail on this. But importantly, what we're focusing on here is the overhead absorbed per unit. And we do this using our overhead absorption rates. Now, what this allows us to do is once we've got an estimated full production cost at the start of the period to which it relates, we then have the ability to plan effectively. So we can do things like set our prices, uh, so once we understand what the full production cost is, we obviously know that if we want to make some money, our price needs to be higher than that. But also as well, it would allow us to set our budgets also. Because budgets very, very important for the planning cycle of the business. So let's continue our previous example then and see how overheads will be absorbed using the overhead absorption rates that we calculated previously. Now, what we know from example one is the overhead absorption rate for department A was $20 per machine hour, and for department B, it was $25 per labor hour. Now we've got some information here on product X, and we've got the expected machine and labor time for each of the departments that product X is expected to use. Now, product X, when it passes through department A, is expected to use two machine hours per unit and 0.5 labor hours per unit. Now it's the two machine hours which is really the important one because we have previously calculated an overhead absorption rate for department A which is $20 per machine hour. So we have to charge or absorb overheads to our products, of which product X is one of these, using a machine hour rate. So it's the two machine hours which is important there with respect to product X and department A. Moving on to department B, once again, we've got the expected time in terms of machine hours and labor hours for product tax in department B. But the most important thing is our overhead absorption rate is $25 per labor hour. So when we're absorbing department B's overheads into product tax, we have to pay attention to the labor hours per unit. And in this case, that's one labor hour. So it wants us to calculate the overhead absorbed by product tax and then work out the full production cost having been given the cost for direct materials and direct labor. So first of all, to work out the overhead absorbed by product tax with respect to department A overheads, we simply take the overhead absorption rate, which is 20 pounds per machine hour, and we times it by the two machine hours that product X is expected to use when passing through department A. So that will give it an overhead absorbed of $40 in respect to department A overheads. 
On to department B, the overhead absorption rate is £25 per labour hour and Product X is expected to use one labour hour per unit, which gives it an overhead absorbed in respect of department B overheads of $25. The total production overhead absorbed, therefore, is $65 across the two departments. Now, given the fact we're already told that the expected direct material cost is $12 per unit and the labor cost is $14 per unit, that then allows us to build up the full production cost of product X. In this case, we've got the 12 and the 14, so we've got 26 in respect of what we would call direct costs, and these are the ones which are easy for us to estimate but we've now also got the overhead absorbed per unit being the $65, which gives us a full production cost, product X, which is 91. Now, again, that's useful. That helps us set our prices. We also have some useful information to help us put our budgets together. So hopefully that's a reasonable estimation of what the production cost will actually be once the period gets underway. Now, what we know from overhead absorption rates, having seen the previous calculations, is the fact that when we work out our OAR, it's based on budgeted figures. Now, we've said we need to do this because at the start of the period, we need to have an estimate of what the full production cost per unit is going to be for our products to help us set our prices, to help us plan our budgets. However, the figures are budgeted and there's a chance our initial estimations were not correct. Now, there's a couple of different things that happen with an overhead absorption rate. Like we've seen previously, they're used to charge or absorb overheads into products. So therefore, we can work out an estimated full production cost. But what also happens is once we start the financial period, we use them to help us build up an estimate of what our production overheads are going to be. And this is a process, again, which we call absorbing overheads. Now, what will happen is each period, at the end of that period, we'll have to do a little reconciliation. And we'll have to compare what we would call our total overheads absorbed to the actual overheads incurred. And there's often a discrepancy here, which we call an over or under absorption. And that therefore just means we have to make a slight adjustment to our management accounting records. So to work out this overall under absorption, first of all, we work out our overhead absorbed in the period. Now here we take our actual hours and we times it by the departmental overhead absorption rate. Now again, this would depend on whether or not we had an overhead absorption rate, which was based on machine hours or labor hours. If we previously determined that this department was machine intensive, the actual hours would be the actual machine hours worked in the period. And of course, the overhead absorption rate would be a rate per machine hour. And this overhead absorbed really, a nice way to think about this is this is our estimate of what the production overheads for the period would have been. Every time we worked, in this case, a machine hour, we would have charged a little bit to our production overhead cost account to give us an estimate of what the overheads for the period would be. So that's kind of what's sat there in our accounting records at the moment. However, once we get to the end of the period and we've had all our invoices in, we then have a thorough understanding of what we spent on our actual overheads. Okay, so then we make this comparison between the overhead absorbed and the actual overheads, and that allows us to work out our overhead over or under absorption. In this case, if the overhead absorbed was greater than the actual overheads, we have over absorbed. If you like, we charge a little bit too much. We need to make a correction in our management accounts. Or if the overhead absorbed was less than the actual overheads, we have underabsorbed. So actually, we've not quite charged enough. So once again, we need to make a correction in our management accounts. So let's have a look at this example then on working out an over or underabsorption. So it's asked us to work out the overall underabsorption for Department A if the actual machine hours for the period were 21,000 and the actual overheads were 415,000. Now remember, we've already seen information to do with Department A. We determined that it was machine intensive and we'd already worked out Department A's overhead absorption rate being a particular rate per machine hour. So we have the ability therefore to work out the overheads that will be absorbed over the course of this financial period. In order to do this, we take the actual, in this case, machine hours. So the actual machine hours worked in the period were 21,000. And we times that by Department A's overhead absorption rate, which we've worked out previously, to be $20 per machine hour. Now, that would give us an overhead absorbed of 420,000. So a nice way to think about that, 
That's what's sat there in our management accounts at the moment. Overheads for department A are sat there at 420,000. However, we then add up all the invoices to do with our overheads and all the payments we've made to do with department A's overheads. And actually for the period, it only came to 415,000. So in this case, the overhead absorbed exceeds the actual overheads by 5,000. So we have what is called an overabsorption. If you like, at the moment, what's sat there in our production overhead cost account with department A is 5,000 too high. So what we'd have to do is just make a slight adjustment to our management accounts to make sure we account for that overabsorption. Okay, so let's recap as far as absorption costing is concerned. So it is a very simple approach to absorb overheads into cost units. Very simple in that it's not overly detailed, it's not overly complex. For each department we work out, are they labor intensive, machine intensive? We work out an overhead absorption rate and once we've got that, we've got a nice simple mechanism to help us work out the estimated full production cost per unit for our products. So if we're going to be comfortable with this area, we need to be comfortable with three main things. The first one is the calculation of the overhead absorption rate. Remember, this is always budgeted overheads divided by budgeted activity level. That activity level will either be machine hours if the department is machine intensive or labor hours if the department is labor intensive. We then also need to be comfortable with absorbing overheads into cost units. So if we want to work out the full production cost for our products, the direct costs are easy for us to estimate, but the overhead absorption rate is going to help us estimate the overhead cost per unit. Finally, we need to be comfortable with working out any over or under absorption. Remember to do this simply, we have a look at the overhead absorbed, which would be actual hours for the period times the overhead absorption rate. We compare that with the actual overheads we incurred, and that will give us our over or under absorption and therefore highlight any adjustment we need to make to our management accounting system.